in this video. In this video, we are going to talk about malaria. There's a few things that we know about malaria and the mosquitoes that pass it on to humans to great detriment to their health. It killed 620,000 people worldwide in 2022. Most of those people were somewhere in Africa. So malaria is a disease predominantly of poor countries. One reason why it hasn't been resolutely tackled to date. Not a lot of profit in doing so, so companies haven't tended to invest in it historically, with a couple of honourable exceptions that we'll come back to later. Secondly, there is at least the bonus that malaria mosquitoes bite people during the evening or at night, and they affect rural areas. So it's possible to go about your business during the day and to take precautions, with treated netting over your bed, for instance, during the night time. Except that has recently all been changing. An invasive mosquito species has been moving in, taking over in a number of places in Africa. This species, Anopheles stevensi, is suspected to be the cause of the recent rise in malaria. Significant increase in Djibouti, for instance, a place that had all but eliminated the disease by 2012, now seeing it 73 times higher than it was a decade ago. Along with Ethiopia, which had been enjoying a big drop in malaria, now seeing it on the increase again. Why? Because unlike the normal mosquitoes, this one will happily chomp on its victims during the day. And unlike the normal mosquitoes, it loves urban areas, not just rural ones. Urban areas where there are lots more people many of whom have had little exposure to malaria, so have built up no natural resistance. Oh, and just to get that icing onto the cake, the Anopheles stevensi mosquito is pretty resistant to a wide range of pesticides. So, the old rules that in big cities you could expect to go about your business with low risk from malaria, no longer the case. As you can imagine, this is a big deal. If these mosquitoes really get established across Africa, it could be phenomenally bad, because suddenly they would be sidestepping the main control measures that we've traditionally used to fend them off. Now, Djibouti is carrying out a large-scale novel experiment to deal a massive blow to this enemy once and for all. Yesterday, May the 23rd, it began releasing genetically modified, non-biting mosquitoes. These come courtesy of a biotech company called Oxitech. The company says it inserts two genes into the mosquito's genome. The altered male mosquitoes are then released. They seek out and mate with the female mosquitoes. Naturally enough, all the female progeny from that mating die. Remember, it's only female mosquitoes that bite humans and pass on malaria. The modified self-limiting gene gets passed down a few more generations of the male progeny, so they then continue to seek out remaining wild-type females until basically the species disappears from the environment. The fact that the altered mosquitoes die out is some degree of assurance that you don't end up with genetic mutants permanently added to the environment, which is one of the things you might genuinely be cautious about doing. Is a time-limited intervention, in principle, a pretty effective one. This isn't the first time this technology has been used. Something similar was deployed in Sao Paulo in Brazil against dengue-carrying mosquitoes. According to a study following the intervention, it resulted in a 96% decline of those dengue-carrying mosquitoes. This was key. African countries have tended to be extremely wary of genetically modified organisms, particularly plants and seeds. That wariness has been fed by vigorous environmentalist campaigning on the topic, feeding into the idea that GMOs were harmful, that they were being pushed onto Africa by powerful Western corporations, 
So back in 2019, for instance, one representative of the campaign group Friends of the Earth told NPR its view of the idea of modified mosquitoes. And he said this, this is an experimental technology which could have devastating impacts. And such sentiments had indeed been, been influential. So a director from the Nigerian NGO, Health of Mother Earth, complained also in 2019, they're trying to use Africa as a big laboratory to test risky technologies. But Djibouti was pretty desperate for a way out, having been so close to eliminating the disease, then seeing such a massive explosion just a few years later. After all, malaria itself was having pretty devastating impacts, so it's not as though defending the status quo was the natural solution for the risk averse. And they paid careful attention to the Brazil exercise, where literally billions of modified mosquitoes had been released. The fact that Oxitex mosquitoes would eventually die out became a point of reassurance within that context. Hence, this week, hundreds of thousands of these mosquitoes were duly released. Now we get to see how it plays out. By the way, this is not the only encouraging sign when it comes to malaria. I mentioned before an honourable exception when it comes to companies spending time and resource investing in this disease of the poor. And that goes to GlaxoSmithKline, which has for many years applied itself to the problem in spite of the economics that would work against it normally. This has recently resulted in something that had eluded us for decades, an actual effective vaccine against malaria. So this year saw the start of a vaccination drive in 20 countries using GSK's Mosquirix vaccine. In addition, another similar vaccine has been produced by the University of Oxford, which is now being manufactured by the Serum Institute of India. Both vaccines have been recommended by the WHO for children starting at five months old. Children often being the victims of malaria, remember. These are the first vaccines against any parasite, so a real breakthrough as they have been shown to reduce cases by about three quarters. Side by side with that, GSK has also announced another discovery. Scientists in one of its facilities in Spain found by chance, that a naturally occurring strain of bacteria has the effect of preventing the transmission of malaria from mosquitoes to humans. The bacteria TC1, which is naturally present in the environment, colonised a group of mosquitoes that were being studied and stopped the development of malaria parasites in their guts. This happens because of a small molecule the bacteria secretes called harmane. Harmane can be produced artificially. Trials are now being carried out to see how effective and safe it would be to use harmane to treat surfaces where mosquitoes thrive at scale in the real world. So, from a long period where all we had were some pretty poor anti malarial drugs, which often had unpleasant side effects and which malaria developed resistance to over time. Suddenly, we have a number of apparent options. A vaccine, which we inject into the people at risk. A substance which we put into the environment that will prevent the formation of parasites. But perhaps the most effective potential solution, the introduction of modified mosquitoes that will simply take out the populations in the first place and remove them from the equation. That latter one, for all that it seems to be the most effective, is also, of course, the one that is considered to be the most controversial. So over to you. What do you think? Are you happy for humans to introduce genetically modified insects into the environment with a view to ending the scourge of malaria? Or do you think we should pull back on those sorts of experiments and focus instead on the other innovations that are now coming at last to the fore. Let me know how you see it in the comments below.